Welcome to Business of Being Black with Tammy Mack. I am Tammy Mack on Fox Soul. As there are more open and honest conversations happening in support of the transgender community, there is still a question about whether a trans person has a moral obligation to disclose their transgender status to employers, acquaintances, and potential sexual partners. And if they don't, are they being dishonest and deceiving people? Well, the business of being black today is transgender disclosure. Please welcome the co-founder of My Sister's House Memphis, Kayla Gore. Hi, Kayla. Hey, thank you for having me, Tammy. Mm -hmm. Comedian Mark Prince is back. Hi, Mark. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? The owner of the Red Carpet Hair Studio, Nicole Ray. I love that name, Nicole. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and the executive director of Trans Tech Social Enterprises, E.C. Pizarro the Third, And host of... Hi, hi, E.C. How are you? Good. And the host of So Shameless and Hard or Soft podcast, Tahoe. Hi, Tahoe. How y'all doing today? Good. The first question I'll ask is simple. Why should Black people care? Why should Black people care if transgender discloses their status? Why should Black people care? Tahoe? Why should Black people care? I mean, there are Black people in the transgender community. Um, there are Black transgender people that are dying, that, that are being attacked, that are being hated on, that are being uh, outed, that are seemingly being shut out of the love that we have in our community. Why shouldn't we care about those of us who we consider ours? Mark, why should black people care? Because trans people are our family members too. So we have to care about all of ours, no matter what their lifestyle is. So we should care about trans people, yeah. EC, the third. <laughs> I think that we should care because Racism, we know that racism is real and the larger LGBT community uh, is very centered on cisgender, white, gay men. Uh, so black people should care about black trans folks. Kayla? Uh, I'm in agreement with everyone who's already spoken that, that black people should definitely care about what happens uh, and what doesn't happen for trans people within the black community. And Nicole, why should black people care about uh, the trans community disclosing their status? Um, piggybacking off what everyone else said, of course, you know, we should care about it because there are issues that affect us as black people, but we should just care about all issues in my personal opinion. You know what I mean? Like there's no reason why there should be black issues, white issues. We should, if more people cared about more issues, then we wouldn't have these kind of problems. So black people should care because it affects everyone. Uh, love it. Yeah, we should care about our issues. Let's get right down to business here. If someone doesn't identify with the sex and gender role they were assigned at birth, are they being dishonest with other people? Who's taking that one first? Who got it? I All got right, it. Mark, are they being dishonest? <laughs> okay, the way you put that question. Okay. No, they're not being dishonest if they were born another gender and they identify with another gender. That's not dishonest. If they do not disclose that gender to someone that would be considered heterosexual and they mean to get in a sexual relationship with that heterosexual, that's deception. OK, because depending on if that's a heterosexual man, I can only speak for heterosexual men, not heterosexual women. If you, depending on how far I go with a transsexual, if it was me, I keep it on me. That depends, that will tell you how much my anger will come out when I find out Okay. that you used okay. to be or still do have the meat and butters, right? Because you could hurt my reputation. So say I'm flirting with you at the bar and you twiddling in my hair and this, that, and the other. And I don't know that you are or used to be a man, but my buddies over there see this and they know. Well, when I get back to my community of heterosexual men, they're going to ridicule me with that for a very long, long time. It is good to disclose because it'll also keep transgenders safe. Disclose it. Why are you deceiving? What do you have to hide? My because son, who knows? Tell you. Who my knows when you're going to be mad? Let me let me finish on this. My son, my adult son, is an openly gay male. When I talked to him at 16 years old, he said, "I think so." I said, "Will you do me one favor? You never hide the fact that you're gay." Ever. Now you don't have to walk around here like a girl and all of that, but don't. I don't need you to hide 
the fact that you're gay. I'm a heterosexual man, and I stand beside my proud adult gay son who does not hide that. Deception, folks is the word that that's what that is. Nicole, is Police. it deception? Let me ask is Nicole. It, is it um, deception? I don't know that it's necessarily considered deception. Like, I feel like a lot of times people want trans people to walk around with a name badge as if we were exactly. walking to a high school reunion. Like, hi, guys, my name's Nicole, and I'm a transsexual woman. I don't feel like that's necessary. I feel like there's a time and there's a place to disclose that information. If I'm at that's the bar and you want to send me a drink, baby, that's on you. If you like exactly. what you want, that's not what I think. You have to understand. No, you have to. I said, said, you hold, that thought, Tahoe. hold that thought, Tahoe. Nicole, well, go I'm ahead. I'm not twirling anybody's hair in the bar. Just that's first and foremost. I mean, I'm not that girl. I don't think that anybody should be twirling hair. If you buy me a drink and you say I'm pretty and we stand there and talk for five minutes, we're not twirling in hair. I feel like twirling in hair comes after we've had a couple of conversations and things of that nature. So, of course. Okay, that, Nicole, you're taking that a bit far. You know what I meant. No, I'm, I'm talking. I'm going with what you said. Like, no, that's, that's, Tahoe, that's, jump in. Jump in, Tahoe. I just feel like we don't take into account the matter of safety. Like, self-preservation is the number one rule in this world. Why should I care about how you feel when how you feel can get me killed, attacked, maimed? You're talking about your group of homeboys. If they're in the same bar, they might out this person at the bar and meet them in the parking lot. Now, what are we talking about? Like, in the, at the end of the day is, we don't know when it's safe. Trans we're, men, we're talking about, women, but you're taking Trans away. men and trans women don't know when it's safe for them to disclose. Why would they want but to? you're taking away to fool my you? right. To okay, you. Kayla Why is looking, uh, uh, Kayla is side-eyeing all kind right? of which ways. Kayla, give us some. I'm very perturbed by the conversations that are happening, especially things that, are, that Mark is saying. When I think about disclosure, I, I not only think about, you know, me disclosing my transgender status or my gender identity prior or present. Um, I also think about men disclosing that they are abusers, that they okay. are, are in, in many different that's ways fair. violent, whether that's verbally violent, mentally that's violent. Fair. Or physically violent. Like, you, you're not disclosing that at the bar when I'm twirling in your hair. So or are they disclosing they got a wife? Or <laughs> you. Okay, that's fair. It's a privilege. It's okay, a privilege. Mark says that's fair. Hold on, Mark. Let her finish her thought. It's a privilege for anyone to know anything personal about me. So I'm not going to disclose that to you because you bought me a drink and because your homeboys are in the corner. But, Keep Kayla, we know you a man off the bat. I'm talking about the ones that really look <laughs> like a woman. We could tell you. Wait, you just did you just did that. that. Wait, you didn't just do that. You didn't just do that. You, didn't just do that. you I thought we said we was going to be hold respectful. That hold, hold that thought everyone. Mark, we know you're a comedian, but let's not be Disrespectful. No, it's true. I can tell. It's crap. Not be disrespectful. It's That's disrespectful. This is not about. But this is not about whether someone. Uh, this is not about how someone looks. That's not what this is about. Uh, no, this is. This, this is about trans people. I didn't say he was ugly. No, this she, is not about how people is, look. Uh, at the, when we're talking about this this topic, look at how Mark is behaving. Look how he's outing her. Look how he's speaking to her. I'll, I'll, this person, I'll she has to walk the streets knowing that there are men like you that will disrespect really? her and make her feel unsafe at any given moment because they have the privilege to that's do so. True. It's disrespectful and it's unnecessary. Listen, you Malik Yoba, that that's the truth, Malik Yoba. If you like trans, that's fine. And I have nothing against trans people, but you <laughs> have the right to not- Hold that thought, Mark. Yeah. EC, you know. EC, you we know. haven't gotten you in Don't this conversation choice. yet. You, we haven't gotten you in this nobody. conversation, EC. It's not anybody taking your choice if you see a woman and you're attracted to them and you don't know they're trans. That don't have nothing to do with the trans woman. Because that has nothing to do not with the trans that. woman. That's everything for <laughs> you. you. Y'all loop That has everything, I'm, I'm speaking, that has everything to do with your feelings and how you feel about your attraction towards a trans person. It okay. has nothing to do with the trans person. The trans person is literally existing. If you find that trans woman attractive and you don't know they're trans and you send them a drink, that's on you, partner. You got to charge that to the game. See how y'all do it? Y'all think you got to charge that to the think. game. Let me finish. You, okay. So are you saying, are you saying, let, let's keep it a buck? Physical attraction this and a buck. starts off. Hold on. Let me, let, Hold on, Mark. Let me you got to let other people get their get their their thought in. You've got to in order for this to be a productive conversation. Yeah. Go ahead, EC. You first start dating someone and you at a grocery store, the first thing you go off of is physical. 
And respectfully, is that the, the first thing? Are you uh, disclosing your penis size or your STD status at the same time you're asking this woman for, for her number? I don't think so. You wait until you're comfortable enough, until you get to a point where okay, you Sammy. feel as though, that's, because that's, your first response... No, hold on, Mark. You're going to let me finish. Because on, your Mark. first response was, when you first started talking, was depending on the situation depends on how angry I get. Yeah, Let's that's true. not forget that trans drive? people, specifically Black trans women, have a life expectancy of 35 and are dying by the hands of Black men who are attracted to them and who are intimate mm. with them. That yeah, is not, that's that's not an opinion. That is a fact. That is point is enough. what is happening. And these men aren't being tricked. They know they are dating trans women. Oh, okay. So Hold that thought. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We got to go to commercial break. We'll be oh, right back on, me, on Business of Being Black on Fox Soul. It's on me next. Welcome back to Business of Being Black with Tammy Mack. I am Tammy Mack. And the Business of Being Black today is should trans people disclose their status? Uh, it's a heated conversation for sure, um, because there is a lot of conversation around this. And so we wanted to have it and we're having it. So when should someone not disclose that they are transgender? Before we get to that, um, when we left off, we had Mark responding to some comments made to him. Go ahead, Mark. I had a whole lot of comments saying what I said, but what I didn't say. Look, folks. It is deception. You can put it the way you want to put it in a Rubik's Cube. And yes, trans folks are dying. And yes, this is happening and that is happening. But everybody has the right to choose. When you were created by the creator, he gave you a right. And that was to choose, to choose to do good, to choose to do wicked. When you go to jail, the first thing they take away is choice. As a man, as a heterosexual man, I have the right to choose whether I'm attracted to a transgender. I have the right, give me the right to say that if I want to sleep with a transgender, not just, oh, I'm really Pinocchio in this mug. No, dude, that's not right. Police have to disclose the fact that they're police officers. Yeah. What makes you any different? It is called Deceive and deception. So, Mark, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question, Mark. Let me ask you a question. So if you're in a bar, since that's the conversation we had prior to the break. So if you're in a bar, you see a woman who's attractive, you walk up to her. She's supposed to say, before you buy me this drink, I just want you to know I'm transgender. I I say that. Is that that what you're expecting? Is that your expectation? Let me ask. Let me ask. I say that if that transgender understands that that man wants something more out of that transgender, then you're buying her a drink. You're buying her a drink. Is the expectation, is the expectation that she say, I am not a woman. Is that your expectation? When it gets far enough. I'm just oh, asking about the, the, drink the, drink the, the, the drink at the bar, Mark. The drink at the bar. The drink at the bar doesn't matter. That's just you literally, you literally just on. I'm gonna like, answer it. Nicole, please. To see I'm gonna answer to somebody. It depends on how far it gets. That it's trans- just a drink at the bar. Yeah. If it's just a drink at the bar, it's a drink at the bar. But if it goes too far. Then that transgender should disclose to that man. It is to that okay, man. Thank you. We got it. We got it. Woman, go ahead, that go ahead. We got it. We got it. Kayla. Let me ask you a question. Oh. Let me Kayla, ask you. A hold question. that thought, Tahoe. Kayla. I feel like this. I, I, I can agree with you, Mark, on choice. That people thank have a choice you, to make you, and decision to make. But I also have a choice on when it's safe for me to disclose to whoever Facts. anything that I need to, to disclose to them. Do you I think you should kiss that. a heterosexual <laughs> male first? But Do I you think I'm kissing? kissing? Mark, Mark, anybody, let, let her what, complete her thought. thought. This is with, whether it's with a woman or a man. I have the choice, and I'm never ever going to disclose my status to a man in a club who has already come on me and made me feel like he wants more than to buy me a drink. I'm never going to disclose that. That's, that's we are wrong. One, because one, he's intoxicated, so he's not in his right mind. So you so won't be okay or may not take the information well. Now we allowed you to speak. 
So please allow me and everyone else the opportunity to get our opinions across. But like I said, I don't know what his, his mindset is or your mindset would be. So I definitely would not disclose to you in a club setting where you've been drinking alcohol and taking in substances that I don't know about. However, I will choose when it's right and when it's safe for me. And, not, and nine times out of 10, that'll be before I meet you physically again. I will let you know what's up. I appreciate the drinks and the flirting and all those good things. And however this may make you feel, but I am a transgender woman. That's respectable. Before we meet again, I'm not going to lead you on and have you thinking anything other than what's Thank you. Actual. Thank I'd you. like to, I'd like Thank to just say that, you know, I understand more no than I um, am leading on to when, when I hear Mark, I feel that heterosexual men are scared of their sexuality. <laughs> um, it's like, yo, am I attracted to a man? Is this man coming on to me? That's an age old thing. Like, oh, I'm not one of those. Like, I'm not like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, what makes you think I'm like that? And the thing is, is that you, you mentioned God giving you a choice as to whether you're attracted to them. And as I believe, East no, East that's said, not what I said. You, I said, as God you gives said, us all that's choices. Your, that's your you attraction you go that's me. giving God you away. We heard. That's God your gives us attraction. all choices. Got it. That's Don't your attraction to them that's giving you away, that's making you feel away. It's your attraction to them that's making you feel like, oh, I was tricked. And I'm going to tell you this. Now you another, thing, it again. another thing is this. No, 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 I'm on, no, I'm on no, live no, on Instagram no, the other day. No, man, you a deceiver. You a deceiver. A trans you a deceiver. I'm Kayla on, got more heart than you. Kayla got live. more heart than you. You a deceiver. Kayla is more respectful than you. I'm on live with a heterosexual male and a transgender woman joins a conversation. A friend of mine. And they have a, a discourse. She gets off the lot. About four or five days later, he hits me up and he says, hey, was that person transgender? We're on live. One person's in Miami, the other person's in Atlanta. I said, yeah, she's a transgender woman. He says, oh, I feel tricked. I can't believe it. I can't believe this. So you really could never tell when there's a safe moment because these two people were on live and they weren't even talking to each other in a sexual nature. So you be, you're, you're, you're moving the goalposts here saying, I'm oh, well, I can have a drink with them. And maybe before this or that happens, it's uh, up to them. No, I never to said Mark, let me, let, please, moment. please, Mark, no. let people get their yeah, thoughts out. Yeah, but don't twist my words. You, it's, I it's gave you four I, whole I minutes to, to yourself. Right. Right. Mark, it's I gave you four to... whole minutes to yourself. Can we allow the other four people on the show to get a That's word right. in? But don't twist my words. I'm not going to allow that for sound bites, and they're going to go out there and have no. Don't twist it. I never said I wanted it's to have a drink. You're scared of your own words. And what y'all did to Dewan Brown and Dr. Umar? Not, and by your wrong. tone or anything of the wrong. nature, all of this you're doing is performative, and it's not impressive at all. It, it's it not hard on y'all because it's that Y'all don't understand how y'all hurt heterosexual men doing that. So what y'all did to Dewan Brown and, and Dr. Umar and the other day, that hurt their reputation, and you don't understand that. You're laughing. Why, why, why are you trans people have to disclose their training? We'll take a commercial break, and we'll come right back. Thank you. I probably won't be back, y'all. Welcome back to The Business of Being Black with Tammy Mack. I am Tammy Mack, and The Business of Being Black today is the trans community. When is it appropriate for the trans community to disclose their status? I'd first of all like to say this. The Business of Being Black is a respectful show who deals with controversial issues within the black culture. Those conversations do get heated. Our producers at Fox Soul, specifically The Business of Being Black, communicate what each show is about to each guest. It is never our intention to deceive, demean, or coerce anyone to participate on the business of being black. This show comes with fire and not everyone wants the smoke. I get it. Let's continue. Uh, so what, um, what are the advantages or disadvantages of disclosing your trans status? Comfort. Cole? Um, I guess I would just say that it just depends on what type of setting we're talking about. You know, we talked about 
workplaces versus friendships versus hospitals, things of that nature. I think especially when it comes to moments where it's going to be a life or death type of thing, as far as like the hospital or something, you know, they need to know everything about you, even if you've had surgery to change your bottom parts, because there's different treatments, there's different ways that they have to go about treating you. Now, the workplace, I think that if you identify as a woman, if you look like a woman, if you present as a woman, if your name is a woman, tell somebody for you know what I mean? Like, why deal with people treating you differently because they know that you're trans if it's not going to, you know what I mean? It's only to me should be disclosed when it's in a sexual nature. Now, when it comes to friendships, of course, I think that your closest friends should know about you because they can't defend you if they don't know the whole you. You see what I'm saying? Now, if it's an associate or an acquaintance, that's not their business, honey, if you don't want it to be. But as far as my close friends go, they can't have my back 100% if they don't know me 100%. So... I mean, you know, it's a it's a right time, right place, right situation type of thing when it comes to disclosing certain things. Like I said, if I'm walking down the street and you see what you see and you want to whistle, you want to holler, you want to do whatever you want to do, do your big one. Not a big deal. EC, you agree with that? Yeah, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Um, I feel as though trans people only have to disclose when it comes down to a sexual nature or life or death um, in the hospital. Anything other than that, like, it's really not anybody's business. Um, if if we're not getting down with the get down, I don't understand why we got to talk about what I got going on. Um, other than that, like, there's no reason for you to really know. Mark, if they're not getting down with the get down, as EC says, why should we? Why should you and I know? And like uh, Nicole said, it depends on the situation and adult conversation, adult wisdom. Yes, it does depend on the situation. It could be at the workplace, right? But say you a person that's um, a tailor. Say you're a tailor. Okay. And you have to take in scenes of a man, of a heterosexual man. You think that's fair? to him what, what the understanding is is but don't tailors fair. take inseams on heterosexual men when you get tailored doesn't a yeah, man have to take but, your but that, at least that heterosexual male does at least have the understanding of the, the assumption that that tailor don't want his goods you understand what i'm saying it's a difference see what y'all are doing is saying what heterosexuals want and you are at the same time asking us heterosexuals to hear, abide by, understand, and have empathy for what you want. It's all about what you want. You're human like we are. But you also have to open up your okay. ears, your heart, and y'all's minds to understand that that is devastating in the heterosexual world. I don't know how long some of y'all have dwelled in the heterosexual world and how first you are. But, but I'm, I'm, I'm asking specifically, world. only because you threw this, the example out there, Rick, right. and we can move on, but I'm asking it's specifically, right. when we're talking about Taylors, that's you brought up Taylors. She said, she said, he said workplace. So, that, well, well I'm just saying you, you brought up if a tailor is doing the inseam of your pants. Is, mm -hmm. is that correct? I want to make because sure I'm Nicole correct. Brought up workplace. So I was given a workplace example where you right, guys is providing me a service so if my, i mean i have breasts i have hips i have whatever so they're just providing me a service they're not supposed to be touching me trying to get frisky with me while they're providing service i can guarantee you honey ain't nothing swinging between this legs that might get in their way honey if they are tailoring me that is their job i don't need to tell you my personal life first of all, i don't even know my tailor like that i might not show up and I get tailored and I go on about my business. You know how many suits, how many dresses, how many things I get altered on a daily basis? Do you think we're having personal conversations like, <laughs> guess what? I used to be a man. Like, that's not that's not a workplace. When I say workplace, if you and I both work for Chase Bay or Wells Fargo or whoever we work for, I don't need to tell you at the coffee machine that I'm trans. Do you oh, agree I with that, Mark? I, I want to ask Mark if he agrees with that part. If she works at Chase. I didn't, I didn't Chase, say Wells Fargo. I didn't say if she Wells works Fargo. at Chase or Wells Fargo, she... No. No, okay. that, well, there that we doesn't have matter. Tahoe. I have no, no interaction with the male ego, with the heterosexual ego. That has nothing to do with it. But so when it has to go in the heterosexual part. ego, so if, if you're a tailor, if you're a tailor, if you're a tailor, if you find out that you altered a dress for a trans woman, is that attacking your That's male That's not what I said. That's not what I said. I said, if you're the tailor, Nicole, and oh, you're doing the end scene Oh, if you're the tailor. Okay, we didn't, we, right? didn't, we misunderstood that part. Oh. Work, 
doing the inseam of a heterosexual male, y'all are saying it's not a problem, but I am a heterosexual male and I'm speaking for us and I'm telling you, so it's I'm a asking, problem. I'm asking you specifically, Mark, and, and we'll move off of the Taylor thing. I'm asking you, I'm asking you specifically. Mm -hmm. Let's just take a heterosexual man or woman. Are you saying you don't want a heterosexual woman to be your tailor, only a heterosexual man? Or are you saying you only want a heterosexual man to be your tailor, not a heterosexual woman? Well, I would prefer a heterosexual woman to be my tailor. You understand? Because uh, But I'm saying, do you mind a heterosexual man? Yeah, I mind a heterosexual. He can do it. So okay. what's the difference? All right, got it. Go ahead. Because he don't uh, want to know me. He don't want okay. me. He's vegetarian. I mean, I don't. So, um, Tahoe, um, the workplace, do you agree with that? That um, it's okay to not identify yourself in a workplace? Yeah, I mean, I think that you should be able to see. The thing is, is that there are workplace discriminations. So, and then what's the reason? Like, this is the whole thing about identifying as black on a um, resume or something like that, because they can use that to discriminate against you. And people do use it. It's historical truth. So I don't see why it's necessary. Um, I don't, that to me falls on the receiver, not the actual person who is identifying different from their birth, right? That's right. your, you want me to make you feel comfortable for your existence and you're basically eliminating my need for comfort or whatever desire that I have for me that has nothing to do with whether I can type or whether I can drive or, or whatever this job calls for. It, it doesn't, it right. means nothing. I'd right. also like to say that Kayla, I, I, um, Kayla, I, I want to move on to you. So we talk about the power of choice and Mark mentioned a lot about the power of choice at the beginning of the show. And, and, and he is right in saying uh, that we all have the power of choice. So does not knowing you are dating someone who is trans mean they have robbed you of your power of choice? I don't think that that's what that means uh, at all. I've been in situations where I've dated men and they didn't know I was trans and so we've been dating for a year, you know, uh, and it just happened because they, they want to talk about children and bearing children and I'm like, I can't do that. I do want to speak about the workplace because I'm a CEO and I'm a community developer. I'm working to build homes here in Memphis and I have to work with a lot of heterosexual contractors. And a lot of the times they don't know that I'm trans, but I'm outed when I say that I'm building homes for trans people or when they meet the actual trans people who will be getting the homes. So I've had this, I've had the experience that a lot of men who identify as heterosexual uh, tend to either overbid, won't bid on jobs because, you know, they're, they're going to be working for a black trans woman. It's a, it's a man's world. It really is. I know very, very few women here in the Memphis area who are doing development the way that I'm doing it. And they've all had the same experience that men have an issue with working with women or working for women uh, when it comes to the building of the homes. And then when you add the fact that I'm a transgender woman and I'm doing this on behalf of transgender people, there's really a big disconnect. So I think that that's the disadvantage of me disclosing in the workplace that I'm transgender because taking me out of the situation and making it more broader, it really alienates trans people in the workplace because there will be rumors and there will be conversations and murmurs about their transgender identity versus the actual work that needs to be done. Productivity is going to be down because people are always going to be concerned about this trans person in the bathroom, this trans person in the break room. What are they doing in there? We're doing the same thing that everyone else does in the bathroom. Uh, that's my take on the whole situation is that it's a deterrent for me. I'm not going to disclose to people who I'm paying and who are my employees or contractors that I'm transgender because that has nothing to do with the quality of the home that you're going to build for me. So let's go back to talking about you dating a, a man for a year and then uh, upon having a conversation about <laughs> children is when you disclose uh, your your status. How does that how, how does that man take it? Yeah. I mean, he continued to care for me in the same way that he did. 
Uh, there was not an issue with our relationship. He didn't become a violent or belligerent person. It was a, a conversation that we had in the bed on pillows. And then we went to sleep on those same pillows and we continued that relationship. Um, I don't think that it, it, it made him feel less of a man because we I've met his family. I've met his children. Like it didn't make him any less of a man. Nothing changed in our relationship. I don't feel that I deceived him. He and I asked him, did he feel deceived? Because I just assume that people <laughs> do these things about me. I just assume that people I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm a person that you can Google and you can find information out about right. me. So it's right. not like, you know, he met me at a pride event. So I'm just I I <laughs> Right, right, right. That would be so a great AC, place to assume that. I mean, AC, cool. uh, do you feel the same way uh, uh, as 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 Kayla here? Yes, I've dated people that did not know that I was a man of trans experience. Um, they blind. Was... They blind. I'm just gonna say it. they blind. They can't see you, man. You was clearly a dude. Yeah, you want to know a secret? I was born female. Really? <laughs> ha! Exactly. Like what if? Now your mind's kind of blown, right, bro? No, so, like, no, it's not. More, no, it see, is. You that's what I'm talking about. No, you Don't literally just sat there. I didn't trick you. Me. I didn't trick you. You were tricking. Listening. Nobody tricked. You weren't listening because I, I said oh, that. I'm and if you listen to Tammy Max intro of me, they said I was the executive director of Trans Tech Social Enterprises. I heard that. It's a nonprofit organization that provides yeah. tech. But you, you, you were born a male, bro. Sorry. I can tell. Well, that well, thank you. Like He's happy. Thank you. Sure that's that's not, exactly yeah. what I was going for. Sure Thanks, that's bro. A, <laughs> that that's seems exactly to be a compliment here. <laughs> Thanks, bro. I appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> that's a compliment. Thank you. Uh, please um, finish, EC. Finish. Yes, but I do think that you know it, it's workplace. Like it's not. It happens, and it's more wrapped up in cis people wanting to know what that means for them that they're attracted to trans people it don't have nothing to do with us it has nothing to do with trans people it has everything to do with what society says cis people should do what we've learned in sex ed because we know sex ed is very heteronormative they that changed it already y'all changed that move on y'all changed you, sex ed tammy mack was speaking to me though bro thanks um I'm not so sure, bro. all of those things happen <laughs> I was until you knew I was trans, but that's fine. Right. Oh, I never he, called he you. Did say you I were was. born a man. I never so called you. Bro. There, there's you that. Told me I was I definitely never, born a man. There's See, no way I'm why, trans. That's why, not your brother. That's I just why. don't know what to do with you, bro. You're a comedian. I tell why you what to do. Everything you say See, be funny. This, you watch this, yourself as a comedian. All right, it's getting hot in the kitchen, so let's take a quick break and cool off. We'll be back on the business of being black with Tammy Mac on Fox Soul. Come back to business of being black with Tammy Mac. I am. Tammy Mack. I'd like to ask this question. Let's say uh, my brother is dating a trans person, but he doesn't know, and I know. Should I tell my brother? Is that okay? Tahoe? I would is, say is this. Her I, I would, I think that's, um, there's nuance to that. Do, do I know the transgender person? Like, do we have the understanding that I know what's going on? I would speak to them, maybe. You know, um, and then in Kayla's situation, it's like after months have gone by and you haven't disclosed, I would probably, if especially if I know that my brother has an aversion or some type of phobia or something like that, I would be worried about my brother's safety, how he's going to react, um, Kayla's safety, how she's going to react, you know, how he's going to react to her. So I would be like, yo, something needs to happen. If you don't say something, then I may say something because I know that my brother may not respond positively. Nicole? Um, yeah, I just think so. If your brother is dating someone who's trans and you know, like if you're friends with the trans person, I would have a conversation with them first to at least give them the opportunity. It's almost like cheating. Like if I catch somebody's man cheating, honey, I'm going to probably talk to the man first because I don't need to be in the middle of, you know, you guys and your feud and now you're mad at me because I didn't told you your man is cheating and that type of nature. You know what I mean? So I would probably have a conversation with that person. And who's to say that your brother doesn't know and just doesn't want anyone else to know that he knows? So that would be another thing that would be in my mind. Like, am I low-key outing my brother and now he's going to feel uncomfortable? 
Um, I just think, you know, I mean, everybody got to mind the business that pays them. That's my feelings on things, you know? People get too emotionally invested in things that have nothing to do with them. What you eat does not make me go to the bathroom. What you eat does not put no weight on my stomach. You know what I mean? Like, so... Eh, it's just kind of, it's a tricky situation. I mean, you know. Yeah, I, just, I, I agree that one is tricky and I might get blown away here, but I it's my brother. I, I'm going to tell my brother everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to tell everything. Say something about and, I, and I'm going to, and I'm going to walk gingerly with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, but I do understand when Tahoe says perhaps approach the trans person first. I hear that. Um, but I, I mean, I'm, I can't see me not telling my brother anything, even if his wife cheated and I saw her in the grocery store. I'm going to walk up to her. Yes, I am. I'm going to say, hi, how are you? I see you holding this man's hand. You know I'm going to tell my brother, right? Like, that's just how it's going. Like, I'm telling, I'm not, I can't foresee me doing that. And even, but now that I hear you talk, I feel like um, approaching the situation, even with my brother, if that were his situation, approaching that gently saying, hey, I still love you. I don't, you know, I don't care what you're doing. I'm just bringing this information to you. And I, and I like, I would have an honest talk with him so that he wouldn't think that things between us changed if that's what he chose to do. But I just can't see me not like a friend. Maybe I mind a business that pays me, but my brother, maybe not so much. I might Tammy, not so you're much. speaking on this. If, if I may, I'm sorry, Tammy. Um, you're speaking on this as if this is a crime. Like, or well, cheating. no, she used like, the she not, used the term is something that, she Nicole used the term cheating. That's why I said that. No, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so, Nicole and, said and it's like cheat. Uh, did I get that and, wrong, Nicole? Didn't you no, say it's like I, if my I, friend was cheating? You know, well, I, exactly, and that's that's what I meant. You know, I was just giving another example of someone knowing information that perhaps their friend or their family member doesn't know, and it's like when is it an appropriate time to bring that information to the forefront? You know. Fine. Right. This is this is a PSA for trans people. The question is, should trans people reveal themselves? And the heterosexual seem like he ain't getting to say nothing. You said cheated. You said deceived. You said cheated. These are all the words I used earlier and was told I was wrong. The difference in this particular question and scenario is a family member. And then all of your viewpoints mystically, miraculously changed on this brother. Let me finish. We heterosexual men's have the same men's, men's have the same rights. Got caught up, didn't you? As your, no, you got caught up, ho. As the same rights as your brother. We have those rights. Give us that choice to make that decision on our own. When uh, 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 Kayla, when you met the man at a, a, a pride thing, Kayla, you're not wrong. It is safe to assume that that man you slept with for a year wants some dang life. That's safe to assume, right? <laughs> but in a heterosexual world, please don't take that assumption with us and I will finish here, please. This morning, it's about safety to people and the safety of the woman. Well, that's what protection. they've been saying. Listen so to me. Show. Listen to me. Listen to me, please. Ooh. The safety of a woman in a heterosexual world. So I knew I was coming on this show. So I turned to my woman before this show, my black woman, and I did this to her. I said, baby, but it's something I want to tell you before I go on this show. I've had sex with a trans man before. The look and fear on my woman's face as if I had taken her choice away. And then I told her, I said, baby, no, I just wanted to see the look on your face. That was a sociological and psychological experiment. But the look on her face was devastating. Do heterosexual men want to devastate their women in this way, whether it was or on purpose doubted. or on accident, whether they were tricked or deceived? I would, How do I look my woman in my, her face? And hold that thought, Mark. That? I'm gonna let Tahoe respond. Not right. Let me, I, I wanna say this. First of all, he is not the only heterosexual man in here, but I will say this. Do not. The fear, the fear that, that heterosexual Bobby men Valentino. have from being outed by women as well, because homophobia and transphobia is huge within the heterosexual women. So we don't want y'all like to to put us out. 
to make us like we're not desirable anymore if we show any desire to any trans or gay or anything like that. We have to she say has the right small to know box. Uh -huh. We have to say so that. Does she have the right no, to know stop, man. Bro, Bro, that thought. You're loud Let me mark. and you're, Mark. you're revealing yourself. You're I don't know if Thank you realize you. it, you're but you're showing you right just that. what the reason why they do not disclose because of men like you who like will me. move like the goalposts however like many me. ways that they like can, but that, that they won't seem like they desire a man uh, that is protecting black person. women and you sneak around and you stick your peanut butter, you dip your chocolate in the peanut butter and then come Mark. and put it back over in here and you don't want to tell her. Mark, we have to let other people oh, talk. Bro, this is a panel discussion. We have to let other people talk. We have to let other people talk, Mark. Mark, so question. We have to. Question. So question, have to. question, you, question are, are you telling your woman every woman that you've ever every slept with? Does she know if, my woman. Does she know Exactly how many women you slept with? Does she Mark. know how many times you used the condom? Hold that thought, Nicole. Hold that thought, Nicole. Mark. We have to let other people speak. Please be I'm, respectful. Please. I'm more concerned that if he thinks that wow. I, because I understand another gender, another sexuality's place. I never said that. I desire this. I never said like, this that. This is what I'm saying. You, you can't, we don't act, we don't offer them the humanity of existing no, without saying that because we understand them, because we respect them, because we welcome them in our community, no, you don't that we them have to sexually that. desire them. You do not That's respect them by doing that. He's essentially trying to shame you in this moment and this is the problem that we're having he's essentially using the fact that you are okay with having an open dialogue with trans women as though you're humping them we're not having sex we're all right here on the same exact call mark the problem is i guarantee you did not tell your women how many sexual partners you've had verbatim i guarantee you have not told her how many times you used the condom and how many times you didn't verbatim and i can guarantee you you're using this old time religion trying to act as though all straight men or men anything about religion I'm, I'm just being funny when i said that you're using the the terminology no. as if all no i never said anything with religion. homosexuals and or trans people are putting things back to their women gay people that. are essentially I the same people in the world do you know there's a sex car outside of the gay club in the world i never said that but you I just said, said you're taking your penis and sticking it in somebody's peanut butter and then yeah. coming back you're black woman, you as in you're bringing in a woman back. without her knowing, and you think that's right. That is deceiving. I don't ask every man that I see with what he stuck his thing in before he stuck it in me. That ain't my business. As long as you washed it off and stupid. wrapped it up when you got wow. over here, that is wow. not my business. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back on Business of Being Black with Tammy Mack. Welcome back to Business of Being Black with Tammy Mack. I am Tammy Mack, and the business of being black today is the trans people. It's trans people. I said the trans people like the blacks. Um, <laughs> it's trans people. The black people. And whether uh, they should di disclose their status. So let's, uh, let's kind of sort of move around to this school thing. How should teachers handle students who choose new names or pronouns without their parents' consent? This is a hard one because it's almost a subject and a topic within it itself uh, when we move into the schools, but um, how should that be handled? Uh, uh, Kayla. So uh, I'm, I'm here in Tennessee and we have a lot of anti-trans legislation that relates to youth and schools. And now we have this new legislation um, that criminalizes teachers from the curriculum that they're teaching and making sure that it's not a deviation uh, from heterosexual education, if that even is a thing. But if teachers are allowing students to use their own pronouns and the choice of their name versus their legal name, they can be criminalized in their classrooms. However, we in that same breath, we have legislators that are saying that teachers have the autonomy to teach what they want to teach and do what they want to do in their classrooms. But then we have legislation that says something totally different and that actually criminalizes them for allowing students to have the autonomy to be who they are, be them true selves in the classroom. Should the parents know though? I definitely think the parents should know, but in a lot of situations, and we know that this to be true, especially in the black community, that, that it's shunned upon to be anything other than heterosexual in the black household. And if you're going to school and you're embarrassing the family by saying that you are not a boy and that you're actually a girl or that you're not a girl and that you're actually a boy and that this is the name that I want to go by and these are the pronouns, the teacher's going to call home. 
And whether that teacher is an ally or not, that conversation is going to go really, really bad because that teacher is going to demonize you if, if she's not an ally. They're going to demonize you to your parents. And then when you get home, you're going to bear the brunt of whatever your parents have for you. So I think it, I think it really should go back to where teachers and students have the autonomy to make that classroom space as, as educational as possible. And, and that includes allowing children to evolve into who they want to be. Tahoe? Yeah, I agree that um, a lot of these things need to be grown out like weeds. Like, at the end of the day, um, understanding and inclusion and things like that start with the children. You're not going to get to people who have grown up in the 90s and 80s and just thought a certain way and they're stuck there. They're not going to change. That right. goes to the person's parents, that goes to their mother, especially the father, but also the mother. So... so um, trying to get the parents to give them the right to, to you know, be themselves is a, is a, th that's a steep hill to climb. But if you allow them to have their space within your classroom and you're teaching them as well as their community um, inclusion and understanding of pronouns and whatnot, then you're able to um, in increase awareness across the board, starting from young and 20 years from now, we have a, just a whole different understanding of, 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 uh, the positivity of being um, gender neutral or whatever it is. Nicole. I mean, what did Eddie Murphy say, honey? A man has a right to be called whatever he wants, honey. If he wants to be called Muhammad Ali, we should respect this man and call him Muhammad Ali. I mean, it was a joke. It was funny. You know, everyone laughed at it. But it's true. I mean, people have the right to be called whatever they want. If my name is Nicole and I'd be like, can you call me Jeffrey or can you call me Crystal or can you call me Kayla? Like, that's my right. And, you know, it's interesting because out here in California, when you first go to school, the very first day when the teachers take a roll back in elementary school, honey, they say your name and they say, hey, how would you like me to refer to you? And that's just what it is. Once the teacher writes that down on the roll sheet, that's how they refer to you. So I don't care. I might want to be called a nickname in class that I'm not called at home. I might want to be called by my middle name in class that I'm not called at home. Or I might be called this at home or I might not be. But everyone should have a choice to be called whatever they want. Like, don't disrespect me by calling me something that I haven't asked you to call. And what did you call at home to tell my parents for as long as I'm doing my work? As long as I'm being respectful and as long as I'm answering to the name that I asked you to call me, that's what you should call me. I remember changing my name in high school to Raquel and, <laughs> <laughs> and it's good. And the teacher actually was calling me Raquel, but I forgot that I had changed my name to Raquel. So I wouldn't answer <laughs> it. <laughs> so she was like, I'm not going to call you Raquel because you're not answering. I forgot. E EC, how you feeling about this school situation? I feel like in schools, it should be a safe space for trans kids. Um, we'd be remiss to not mention that like black trans kids and black queer youth are dying by their own hands of suicide because of the judgment and the effects of all of this. I was outed by another parent and a teacher in high school. Um, and I'm not saying everything went great, but I'm also not saying everything went bad. Um, so it's like, it's a, a give and take. And if we're really about protecting Black kids and protecting the youth, like we have to be able to have schools be safe spaces. Um, Speaking of that, talk about Trans Tech. Yeah, so Trans Tech Social Enterprises Center trans people, specifically BIPOC trans folks, and learning of the skills to enter into the tech field. Um, a lot of people think that tech is really inaccessible. We talk about tech in general. It's usually white and men. Um, and at Trans Tech, we go a step further and we make it trans, black, POC, and indigenous. Um, make it very accessible for our community. And we provide free resources for that community. Um, Thank and you. I'm going to get to Kayla real quick. I think we got it. Kayla, talk about the mission behind uh, my sister's house. Trying to get through everybody here. Get the heterosexual on that question again. Again, Kayla, get the heterosexual. You know what, yeah. Mark? I'm, I'm Mark. No, I saw just three. Mark, five, three questions. Mark, you asked all the trans people. Mark, and you, you have talked the whole show, and I have to get to your project. Kayla, game. talk I'm about my sister's house. I talk here. about my sister's house. So, my sister's house is a nonprofit organization here in Memphis, Tennessee. Ooh. We have the Tiny House Project where we are building tiny homes for trans women. To date, we have completed six homes. We're working on three as we speak. 
as soon as I get off the, of this show. Congratulations. Um, um, thank you. I'm going to be heading to one of our construction sites to uh, build a fence around a house that we just completed. People can look us up on our website at www.mshmemphis.org. <clears throat> Nicole, what can you tell us about the Red Carpet Hair Studio? Oh, the Red Carpet Hair Studio was just a dream for a little trans girl, honey, really a grown trans girl, because I transitioned at a grown-up age. But it's just to show people that you can have your own. You can be more. You can have more. And, you know, being on here with Kayla just lets people see that we can do big things. So we're a salon that supports everyone, honey. You can come in. You can be yourself. You can participate. You can work here. You can get your hair styled here. And you don't have to worry about any judgment or anything. I love that. it. I want to say real quickly that um, Mark did hang up off of the show. He felt like he wasn't getting enough time. That is absolutely false. And also, uh, I'm televised in six major markets or more, so we have to follow a clock. So I was not able to get to him, was going to make him the last uh, person to talk about his project so that he could continue with the conversation. But that didn't happen because he hung up. Tahoe, please tell us about your project. You got 30 seconds, bruh. Oh, you're going to make the heterosexual guy the last guy? No, I'm just playing. I'm joking. Um, I am a podcast host of two podcasts in Black America. One is called So Shameless um, with the co-host, Miss Daja Bell. And as we talk about urban issues, um, and the other is Heart of Soft podcast, where we talk about sex and men, things that make us hard and the things that make us soft. Come check us out. Ooh, yeah. I need to check that out to make Me sure too. I know what make you hard and soft. I got a heart out. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye. Later. <laughs>